Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Lynch, and I'm an Enrollment Planning Manager with Emerson College. We're certainly pleased to see you here today. Thank you all for joining. I know a number of you are coming into the room as I'm saying hello, so just come on in. Um, just wanted to once again say uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're excited to share with you more about the um, Global BFA and Film Art uh, here at Emerson, which of course is a partnership with Paris College of Art. And I uh, know today is a good day to learn more about the program as a whole. We can talk a little bit more about what the experience is like, uh, and certainly also a little bit more about the um, process of applying to and potentially getting admitted into the program. And then most importantly, we'll certainly be looking forward to answering a lot of your questions. Uh, it's definitely a very exciting program, an absolutely interesting and unique global experience for students interested in film, potentially in combination with perhaps some studio art experiences. Um, so it's really a sort of a different approach to the study of film, not only in terms of location, but in terms of the type of um, coursework and, and uh, experiences you'll get to have. And I know uh, our faculty member, which I'll introduce in a moment, uh, will be uh, excited to share more about what that is like. A um, couple of housekeeping details before we get started. Um, this session will be recorded and made available to you all about a week or so after today's session. So if there's something that you missed, you want to go back and take a look at again, um, get some information, you'll get that um, recording in about a week or so. Uh, we also have closed caption available. So if you go to your um, function bar on the webinar, you'll be able to see um, uh, the closed caption button. Go ahead and press that and you'll have that available to you. And then last but not least, uh, I want to just mention that after our presentation this afternoon, we'll have a question and answer session uh, at the end of this uh, end of the uh, information session. So if you do have any questions, please place them in the Q&A uh, box as opposed to the chat. Uh, so we can be sure that we see them and get your answers to you for your um, any questions you may have this afternoon. So with that said, let's go ahead and get things started. I'm going to turn things over to our program director for the uh, film art program. And his name is Dan Gosher. And Dan, go ahead and take over. And, um, and hey, hey, everybody. Thanks, Mike. And uh, yeah, watching the list here of people as they're talking where they're from, it's kind of interesting, again, that uh, we get people from all over the country and you know sometimes all over the world uh, entering this program. Um, so we'll definitely do some question and answer. And uh, write down any thoughts. Uh, add them to the Q&A, if you like, as we go along um, so you don't lose the thought. And uh, let me walk you kind of through the program. Uh, at points, Mike will come in and give some additional details. So uh, first off, let's talk about uh, the what makes the program unique. Uh, now, first off, of course, three locations. Uh, we have three campuses involved in this program. Uh, there's going to be the Emerson College one in Boston, uh, which you can see a picture. There's going to be, of course, Paris itself, where you'll spend the entire academic year. And uh, very unique to us, uh, you know, in this program is uh, Emerson has a castle that we own up on the uh, Netherlands German border. You can actually see a picture of it there at the bottom. Uh, it's called Castle Well. And uh, yeah, we have classes that span all three of these locations during the program. Uh, another interesting fact about this program is this is not just an Emerson program. This is actually what's called a joint degree, meaning it's an agreement between the two colleges, Emerson College and Paris College of Art which means that you actually become a student of both colleges. And as a result, you get degrees, BFAs from both colleges. So it's a joint degree resulting in two BFAs at the end of it. Mike mentioned, um, and it's funny that we call it, you know, film study because in the title itself, you know, it's uh, the global BFA in film art. And the approach here was to kind of give the filmmaker a much more rounded and informed view, contextual and the fine arts. Uh, it just makes for a better auteur, a better director, a better visionary. Um, so we take kind of the strengths of both colleges. Uh, obviously you have uh, Emerson with, uh, you know, very much kind of uh, somewhat of an industry approach. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time here at Emerson College. And we combine it with the strengths of Paris College of Art. Uh, which is, you know, adding a lot of the studio arts, the hands-on, as well as the art history, and all of the resources that Paris brings to the program. So we end up with very much a, a kind of hybrid program that's not necessarily just about making narrative film or documentary film, but it's also about making installation art, 
It's about making mixed media and interrelated media. Uh, it's about uh, streaming services. It's about you know curation of film festivals and uh, curation of uh, media arts and museum environments. So this kind of actually opens up a whole not only other continent, but it opens up a whole bunch of different industries that you can jump into after going through a program like this. And then of course the global education itself, like I said, you're not just uh, on a semester abroad, you know, or a couple of weeks abroad. This is actually a really immersive program. You become in a lot of ways, a citizen of all of these locations. Uh, and that's really kind of unique to this program. So Michael, jump us ahead. Let's talk a little bit about the program calendar itself, okay? The way that this is set up right now, this program is, uh, it's a pretty intensive program. It's set up uh, as a three and a half year program uh, to kind of take you through what happens. You would enter the program pretty soon after you've graduated from high school, meaning that you'll come in early July and uh, then be in the United States in the Boston campus uh, for about six weeks. And part of that part of the, the summer is to get you acclimated to college life, but also prepared for the jump that you're about to make into a, a different culture. Um, from there, we all travel as a group, all the freshmen travel as a group and head out to Paris in late August. And we have about a week and a half, two weeks of orientation while we're there. Uh, get your feet underneath you and learn how to live day to day in Paris. Also get your courses set up for Paris College of Art and then um, spend an academic year. So nine months in Paris, attending the Paris College of Art. Um, the first summer in the program, uh, otherwise listed here as summer two, the first full summer, you're coming back to Boston and you're gonna be doing a lot of intensive uh, filmmaking with Emerson's facilities and equipment. Uh, so that's a full summer uh, back at Boston. Then you can return uh, on your own to uh, Paris so that will be your academic year two for another full nine month session, two semesters over in Paris. That third summer in the program is quite interesting. That's where we'll actually take you uh, on chartered bus from Paris up to our castle uh, up in the Netherlands. And you get to spend an entire summer there. And uh, there's lots of field trips involved in that. Uh, you know, We've gone to uh, Berlin, we've gone to uh, Belgium, uh, Italy, we've gone to lots of museums in the Netherlands, we've gone up to England. So um, even though we're in the castle in the Netherlands, there's still a lot of activity going on. Um, that leads to your third full year in Paris after that. That's your capstone year where you're working on projects. Uh, you'll see a lot of this in the class descriptions about to come up. And then uh, after you've done that, you've done the majority of your production work on your capstone, you come back to Boston that last summer, summer four, to finish up post-production, to work in groups, to do your finishing, and then have a big final screening. So that's an entire summer uh, to finish you out in Boston. So a little bit on the specifics, uh, I won't dive too deep, but feel free to ask questions about this uh, kind of thing. Uh, what kind of classes would you be taking? What exactly is this film art curriculum that we're talking about? Uh, well, we start off in Boston with uh, obviously the foundations and the, um, the foundational studies course, course approach to media studies. So just building that kind of foundation before you jump off into uh, Paris. Paris itself, there is uh, French courses required uh, in the fall and spring of that first year. Uh, I can't emphasize how important it is, and I hope you're excited about this, but learning to speak French, uh, not only for the daily activity, but also for the opportunities that it opens up for internships, uh, employment, other things later on. It's very important that you, you learn to, to speak French. So a couple of classes will help you with that in your first year. Uh, there's also things like media-based writing, so the basics of screenwriting, uh, critical thinking and writing one, uh, liberal arts course there. Media production one. So this will be the first time that you're actually doing an entire uh, semester, uh, 14, 15 weeks with uh, the cameras. Uh, also critical thinking and writing two would continue for you. Color photography, uh, one of the, uh, the good studio art classes offered at PCA and cinema lighting. So starting to learn to work with fixtures. When you come back to us in Boston that uh, summer, you have a studies course, media histories, but like I said, it's actually gonna become more intensive on the film part. So introduction to film, 16 millimeter filmmaking, uh, directing for actors, learning the skill set of dealing with your actors, and then introduction to editing uh, based on Adobe Premiere, which everybody would have a free license to uh, as you're enrolled in this program. We would head back to Paris. Some things we're studying there, cinematography, uh, that's going to be on, um, on professional level digital cameras. Uh, then studio electives. This is interesting. Um, 
you know, we put recommended set design there, but one of the benefits of uh, PCA is that they have a large selection of studio-based fine arts courses that you can take. Um, you can take them as part of the core. There's a couple of them in the core requirement here, but I do want to mention one thing that's really an amazing opportunity, which is they allow you to take, I believe it's up to, I want to say two additional studio elective courses per semester for free. So as being enrolled in a part of being enrolled in the program, you can actually, you know, go and take that course in painting or drawing or fashion or something else, even outside of the curriculum here. And, uh, and it's actually free. Um, so a couple other things in your second year, liberal arts, uh, science or math course that'll be offered, media production too, taking it to the next level, uh, a general elective. So anything that PCA offers, you can choose a class there, another studio elective or internship. This is a new program that we're starting up right now. Uh, and this is uh, internships that are being um, administered through a third party called Artbound. And that opens up a lot of opportunities for us uh, all over the European continent. Uh, Paris yesterday and tomorrow, French cultural course, intro to sound principles and audio production. So field recording, uh, basic pro tools, that kind of thing. The third year here is gonna be that summer at the castle. Uh, there's four topics courses there. They kind of work hand in hand. So uh, the art history course uh, during the first half of the summer, representations of the cultural other and European art goes hand in hand with art of the documentary. Basically, it's uh, studying representations of uh, various cultures. Uh, we can really leverage the museums that we have access to all over the Netherlands, Germany, uh, Belgium. And uh, we make documentaries about the entire process. Second half of the summer is uh, theater based. So it's going to be an art history course called Storytelling and Drama supported by Storytelling and Film. Now, the last year that we go into here at Paris, so you know, you see there's a lot of BFA project courses. That's because this is your capstone year. This is the year where you can decide uh, what medium you wanna work in. Do you wanna be working in a, uh, a standard narrative uh, with film? Would you like to be doing an installation piece? Meaning I need some support from faculty about sculptures, about galleries. Do you wanna be doing something that's uh, you know conceptual and modern art? All of these things are, are up for grabs in that capstone year. It's really what you wanna do. Uh, in support of that, we have classes like the project conceptualization course, the project research seminar, the project management course, which is going to help you uh, figure out all the steps and support you along the entire project. And then motion graphics and or writing the feature, uh, are, depending on if you need to write a script ahead of shooting, or if you wanna be studying motion graphics, uh, you know, visual effects and uh, things like that, that'll help you later once you're done with shooting. Uh, you'll notice that, uh, oh, sorry, what back one for me, Mike, if you would. I just wanted to mention the, the BFA project production. You have an entire semester to actually shoot, you know, if you're going to be uh, shooting media elements. Uh, if you're doing installation or other things, you're going to be doing uh, pre-builds, design, et cetera, um, studio elective. And now we can move forward to uh, after you've shot and or done your, your pre-visualization, your pre-production for um, gallery-based pieces. You would arrive in Boston, we do a studies course, uh, the moving image and contemporary art, but we do BFA workshop, which is where you're going to be doing post-production on your film or your media piece. Uh, also, if you're doing gallery pieces, that's where you're doing your build out and uh, you know getting the space ready for your shows. Uh, production practice is uh, going to be a, a last of the uh, production courses, followed by project presentation, which is leading up to things like um, how to do public relations for your piece, you know, press kits, uh, how to uh, interact with uh, distributors and curators, and then finally how to interact with the public by having a big, large gala screening, which we do for the capstones that are up on the screen, and our gallery pieces, where we have a week in the art galleries, uh, which culminates in a, uh, uh, an art reception. Um, so that's basically the curriculum. We squeeze it into three and a half years, and um, I'm, I'm sure this might come up in the questions, but you know, it does take a certain student responsibility, obviously, and a commitment to a program like that. Um, it is intense, but what you get out of it is really a lot what you put into it. So if you're willing to kind of put that energy in, it's an amazing experience. Um, don't forget this too, uh, I had added this, the co-curriculars. So of course, outside of those classes, there's still stuff that's going on in support of, uh, of your education. Some of the things that we have going right now, the Cine Club, and the Cine Club is um, interesting. We actually rent an entire theater in Paris for an evening. Uh, we screen a film, we analyze it, we have guest speakers, it's open to the public, so you get to interact with a lot of other uh, cinephiles. Um, 
industry talks. Industry talks are held once or twice a year. And uh, we feature some top level people from uh, various industries. They're gonna talk about the direction of the industry. They're gonna talk about how they've done uh, their work in the industry. And then they're more than happy to talk with you and field questions about kind of where it's going in the future and where you might fit into these industries. Uh, I mentioned the internship. That's uh, gonna happen in the uh, second year. And then another interesting thing is uh, attending film festivals. So getting you used to actually not just going as a, a consumer to watch films at the film festivals, but actually taking part in things like the, the film market, talking with distributors, seeing what the entire industry is like from the point of the, uh, the filmmaker themselves. And uh, usually we'll have you sit down with one or two of the filmmakers that are showing at those film festivals. So you can actually interact with them directly and ask those questions about what it's like from their perspective. So you can see here Rotterdam, uh, one of the largest film festivals, most important film festivals in the world, uh, shorts and features there. Uh, and then uh, we take you over to uh, Clermont-Ferrand and uh, that's actually the biggest shorts film festival in the world. So two of the major ones that we'll, we'll take you to. We got some good questions here. Um, let me answer the, at least one or two of these, uh, or the top one, if I can, Mike, before I toss this over to you for some information about the application process. So the question from Ben, uh, would being a native French speaker impact my French language course? Um, it's still required, Ben, I, I, I wanna say that, but the great thing about it is, is that uh, because you know it's at Paris College of Art, it's taught by, by French faculty. Uh, basically, they have courses all along a spectrum. So they have courses at the beginner level for people that have never spoken French, uh, all the way up through conversational courses where um, you know, the, the course takes place in French and it's around a topic uh, or a conversation. Uh, and it's just, again, strengthening your, your French speaking skills. Uh, it is still required though, even if, even if you're fluent, it's still required uh, you know, two times in uh, one each semester that first year. Um, and that's that I think, Mike, I can get back to other questions, but if you wanted to talk about the application process, Sure, yes, I, and yes, folks, we will definitely get to the additional questions, um, but we thought it'd be helpful to, uh, and of course, questions, you know, we can answer anything from, you know, more about the size of the program, um, res, you know, residential life while you're both in Paris and Boston, things of that nature. So really any of the questions that you may have, we're happy to, to talk about those more extensively, but we did think it'd be helpful to also give you a little bit of a sense of the application process. I know sometimes we get questions from students, you know, indicating um, wanting to know more about the application process, particularly given that it's a joint degree program and there's two institutions involved. So um, good starting point is that um, if you're interested in applying to the program, you actually do it through Emerson College. So even though um, Paris College of Art uh, admissions staff members work and faculty work with us in the review process, the entire process of applying goes through the Emerson College application process. So you can, as you can see, you can use uh, the common application, which honestly the vast majority of our students that apply to Emerson in general use. Same holds true for the film art program. Uh, we do have an Emerson application that you're certainly welcome to use as well. But uh, as I mentioned, the vast majority of students use common application, especially if you're applying to multiple common application schools. It just makes you know, perfect sense to do that. Um, there are some additional uh, required items uh, as you apply. So there is, of course, the standard common application essay that you'll answer just by virtue of completing that program. Uh, Emerson uh, does ask for two additional writing supplements, one that they're both short answer, one that um, just tries to learn a little bit more about why you're interested in the major you're applying to. Um, and then uh, the other one is a bit more of a creative essay. So it's just an opportunity to sort of flex your creative muscles a little bit. So there's a little response there. There is one last essay required uh, specifically for film art students, and it really delves more into your experience and or interest uh, and focus on an, on a global education. So talking a little bit more about and delving into, like I said, perhaps previous experiences you've had, uh, things you've you know uh, been able to do in terms of exploring um, other countries or or global experiences you may have had, uh, and or if you haven't had the opportunity to do that uh, at this point in time, certainly a bit more about uh, exploring why um, 
international education is is important to you and sort of talking through through that to us a little bit more. So we're just trying to learn more about you know your overall fit and interest with a global experience since that is a critical part of of the three and a half years you'll be involved in the program. Um, then we have the additional required credentials you may expect. Um, uh, so things like uh, your um, transcripts. So we need official high school transcripts. At this point in time, we're only able to accept applications from new first-time students. So students that are currently in high school. So this is not a program that is available to transfer students. Um, so we're specifically looking at your secondary school transcripts. Um, if you're, uh, you know, uh, at a, an institution abroad that, uh, you know, uses um, A-levels, O-levels, things of that nature, of course, we'll be looking more closely, not only at transcripts, but any of your examination scores as well. Um, additional items that we're looking at, we're interested in learning more about you, of course, outside of your academics. So... Uh, we do ask students as part of the application process, of course, to share more about your passions and interests outside of the classroom. So these may be things that you're involved in at school. Uh, these may be things you're involved uh, with in the community, could be a part-time or summer job, uh, you know, leadership roles, honors, awards, et cetera, anything that you've been able to uh, accomplish over your secondary school years. Um, we're certainly interested in knowing more about that, trying to get to know you a little bit better. Um, as it, you'll note there, uh, it indicates we are, to, oh, sorry, I should also mention we do require two recommendations. So one is your uh, college counselor recommendation. And then we do ask that you supply us with um, uh, a teacher recommendation as well, preferably a teacher from um, a junior or senior year um, and an academic core course if at all possible. Uh, you are able to supply additional recommendations if you're interested in doing so, um, but know that the minimum requirement would be um, your counselor recommendation and just at least one teacher recommendation. Uh, we are test optional, so um, I will say that if you have a test score that you'd like to submit, by all means, feel free to do so. Uh, that being said, we uh, do not require that uh, for consideration, both in terms of admission and potential scholarship opportunities. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. And I will tell you, we've been doing it for about four or five years now. So we've got a pretty good sense of, you know, best way to balance our review process to find uh, the, the candidates who are the best fit uh, without the necessity of having a test score. So if you've got a score you're proud of and you want to share, by all means, go ahead and do it. If not, uh, I would not be uh, concerned about including that piece. Um, and just for some perspective, uh, I want to say, We've gone from when we first started the first year, about uh, 650 to 60% of our students still submitted test scores. Now it's it's certainly, I'd say, less than 15% 15, 15 of students submit scores. So again, we've got a pretty good sense of, of how to review your file without that information. And then the last piece that is important, this is a little different from our our film-based program, uh, Boston-based film program, where a creative sample is recommended uh, and certainly encouraged, but not required. This program does require a creative sample. So really it's pretty specific uh, in terms of what we're looking for. So you can submit a film or video up to five minutes in length. Um, and then we do ask, kind of keep that size uh, in mind for purposes of uploading it into the system. But um, we do ask you also pay attention to the to the five minute length as well. Um, and with this, a couple of other things to keep in mind. We know um, with film submissions, sometimes students are concerned about, well, you know, what if I don't have access to high end equipment, things of that nature. We're really not concerned about what you're shooting on um, as much as really trying to get a sense of your storytelling abilities and things that so it could be your phone it could be you know really anything that you can use um so I, I wouldn't be concerned as much about um again that necessarily the technical aspects of the equipment you're shooting on as much as your your uh, evidence of your ability to tell a story um the other thing i'll mention is i know a lot of times particularly at secondary school level we find a lot of students will do group projects uh, for films. Uh, if you submit something that is part of a larger group project, 
we do ask that you provide us with some background in terms of um, your role within the production and creation of that film. Um, so a little bit to keep in mind with the creative sample if you're doing film or video. Uh, again, given the nature of this program and that we certainly see an integration of a significant amount of potential studio art opportunities mixed in with the film study, we also allow students, of course, to submit uh, a traditional, if you will, uh, studio art-based portfolio, 10 to 15 examples of your creative work. And it really can be in any other media. So it could be photography, digital analog, um, drawing, painting, sculpture, et cetera. So um, again, you've got that flexibility to submit what you think really uh, showcases your abilities and, and your creative um, perspective. So a couple of things to keep in mind with that. As far as the process itself, a couple of other things to keep in mind. We do have uh, two rounds of early decision that is binding. So that would only be really for students that know this is the one and only program for them and they're planning on enrolling if admitted. We do have uh, our first round with a um, November 1st application deadline. Um, second round you have uh, until I believe mid-January. Uh, and then we also have early action. So if you want to apply early, but you're not quite certain yet, you can also apply by November 1st for that. And then lastly, we have regular decision and that deadline is, um, is also January 15th. So you've got uh, some additional time to put your um, application and supporting credentials together, uh, creative samples, et cetera. Uh, so that's generally the process I will mention, as I mentioned earlier, um, both the Paris College of Art staff, as well as our uh, admission staff review your application uh, and then of course we'll sit down and make final decisions jointly uh, between the two uh, offices um, as part of the process so always a good idea to stay in contact with your regional representative for Emerson and certainly uh, I know the staff at uh, Paris College of Art are also happy uh, and willing to answer any questions along the way uh, you can access all of that information at, on the um, Emerson website um, with, and the program page has a links to both our admission office as well as Paris College of Art admission office. All right, well, with that said, I think we can wrap up that process. Happy to answer any additional questions you may have, but in general, thought it'd be a good idea if we can get to your questions as a whole. Um, so maybe I'll take this next one right off the top here, um, Daniel. So how many students are accepted each year? So this program has been in place for five years now. And what we've seen, generally speaking, is applications are going to be generally, give or take, we, we're finding about 300 or so applications a year are coming in, sometimes a little bit low, below that, sometimes a little bit above, but about 300 applications of that we have typically accepted approximately um, 110 to 120 would be, a, I'd say pretty average for a typical year. And then of that group, we tend to see a group that comes in somewhere around 25 or so students. That's typically the sort of the ideal size that we find. Again, some years it might be slightly below that, some years slightly above, pushing around 30, but um, ideally we're looking in that 25 to 30 range. So it's a it's a fairly competitive program, but you know, not not ridiculously so. Um, so uh, Horace has a question. Dan, I may um, yeah send this your way. How does French education differ from the U.S. education? I'm guessing sort of like so the experience at Emerson versus the experience at PCA. Yeah, it's a very astute uh, astute question to to know uh, that those systems are going to be different uh, in the context. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, I would say that when you're in the PCA system, uh, like I said, you know, when you're on one of these home campuses, when you're at Emerson, you're an Emerson student and you're following Emerson policy and the way that Emerson would teach any of its students. When you're over at Paris College of Art, you're following Paris College of Art policy. You're working with uh, teachers that are all European, so they're all hired locally there. And you're also working in sort of kind of a day to day existence that you know, that is actually European influenced. Um, 
I would say the main differences, um, first off, if you want to talk about the academics, um, I think that uh, American uh, or US-based institutions tend to, uh, to do a lot of uh, hands-on. So the instructors are usually very active in assignments. Uh, and you know, there's all those, this kind of sense of support or kind of looking over your shoulder, keeping an eye on everything. Uh, the European model tends to be a little bit more do-it-yourself. So in that case, what you are is you're getting assignments, but a lot of the re responsibility lies on you to actually, you know, handle the assignment and to ask the questions that need to be asked and uh, to move things forward yourself. Um, I think that's probably the main difference in the two pedagogies uh, and the way that European faculty approach uh, projects and, uh, and interaction. Um, the other thing I would say that differs a lot between the two systems is the the day to day life and the sort of kind of infrastructure uh, or at least mentality around what a student does in, in their day to day life. Um, you know, Mike, you could obviously speak to this with your experience about student life and, you know, the students on campuses. But if you come to the Emerson campus in Boston, it's a very, you know, United States uh, American type of system. It has, um, you know, a dining hall that's located there. It has, you know, uh, medical uh, facilities. It has a lot of student support that's on the campus. Whereas when you're in a European institution, um, it's more again of a do-it-yourself thing. You you have an assigned um, you know room in a building, but the the dorm building for Paris College of Art is not on a campus. It's an urban college in the middle of a giant metropolis. So for instance, the SDN or the dorm building you would be staying in is located about 15, 20 minutes away. Um, there's also no uh, dining hall at Paris College of Art. So you learn to take some self-responsibility. Uh, a lot of this happens in the orientation process. And, you know, we try and set you up for success as much as possible. But things like banking, like feeding yourself, uh, like transportation, are all things that largely fall on you as the student. Um, and so there is a little bit of a difference between the two environments. Um, I would say, of course, the greatest, uh, you know, pro that comes out of that is, is that you learn to exist in both systems and you end up having exposure to something that, say, a student in just one system or the other would never would never have. So that kind of global attitude or approach that you get out of this uh, is actually, a, I think, a huge benefit in the end. Okay. All right. We have a question from Ben about um, if a student has both French and American citizenship, would this impact your application? So. So I'd say yes and no. So your application itself um, that we would review wouldn't necessarily, it wouldn't necessarily impact your, you know, your overall application, if you will. If you were admitted into the program and ultimately decided to enroll, it will actually impact um, your need for, um, so typically students will need, possibly if they're coming from abroad, would need a U.S. visa, if uh, if they're a domestic student, as well as a French visa, if they're not a French citizen, if a student is a U.S. Um, citizen, they wouldn't necessarily need a visa for coming to Boston, but they would need one for Fran uh, studying in France. So in your case, if you have both citizenships, it actually makes um, the process much easier for you uh, in terms of not necessarily needing a visa uh, for um, uh, or the visa process would be much easier in that regard. You wouldn't need one for us. And in theory, I don't believe you'd need one from um, for Paris College of Art as well. What you would need to do is, of course, provide us with, um, ideally, what, it would be helpful if you had active um, uh, passports for both, uh, both uh, countries. And if you can show that as proof, that, that expedites the process dramatically. So... Okay, um, so Daphne has a question. What are you looking for when screening the short films in the application? Uh, and also, how do you find out about who your regional rep is? So um, as far as the screening, that's actually done not exclusively, but I'd say primarily by our, uh, our um, colleagues at Paris College of Art, since they are the art institution, if you will, the art school. Um, and I know, again, sort of what I talked about before, they're, you know, it's looking at a broader perspective of, you know, uh, storytelling ability. So 
you know, how are you structuring your story? Um, uh, what types of shots are you selecting? So they're certainly looking for some technical aspects of it as well. But I think ideally what uh, what they're looking for is sort of that story building and tell, uh, storytelling ability, excuse me, along with you know, looking at uh, a number of aspects of the um, um, the technical aspects, if you will, like you said, like choice shots um, uh, or, or shot choices, um, uh, you know, dialogue, et cetera. So it, it, again, it, the bigger thing is you know, you're going to learn a lot of what you need to know to continue to improve as a as a filmmaker um, while you're in the program. So it's not like everyone has to be coming in, you know, fully formed. Uh, so it's it's really looking at it sort of from that uh, a little bit more of that 10,000 foot level than sort of under the microscope, if that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. I mean, I'm happy to connect you with some folks over at PCA if you want to get their perspective as well. In fact, I know one of the things in conversations that we um, have been having this summer is looking at the possibility of some of our PCA colleagues in the admission office over there offering up um, some uh, portfolio uh, building, uh, sort of like a portfolio uh, review process um, and talk about how to construct your portfolio. So workshops, if you will. Um, so be on the lookout for more information on that as well. As far as how you find out who your regional rep is, hopefully we can get that in. We'll put that in the um, chat. But uh, basically, if you go onto the admission webpage um, on the Emerson website, one of the areas is you know, meet the staff. Um, and you can click on that, and then that'll uh, show you who our staff members are and where they work you know, what territories they work with in terms of um, students in your students in their area. Okay. Here's another uh, portfolio related question. Um, if two students work on a film together and both apply using that film, is that allowed? That's, that's a good question. Um, I mean, in theory, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we know that sometimes projects are worked on together. So if that were the case in this scenario where both are applying, you'd need to make it abundantly clear what, you know, which individual did what on the on the project and really kind of talked more about that, make sure that there's a clear delineation about who did what and what what the contributions were. Um, I'm going to put my uh, contact information in the chat as well. If uh, Sophia, if you can reach out to me on that. Um, I actually would like to confer with my colleagues over in PCA about that as well. On the surface, I would say I, I don't see an issue with it, but I want to make sure that they're comfortable with that as well. If it's okay, the clear thing and like the clear thing most assuredly is that you, you need to be clear on you know whose contributions were what aspects of the of the project. Okay. Um, Daniel, maybe this is one you can give some insights on. Uh, is there much sure. collaboration between the students of PCA and students of the joint program? So while the students are over in PCA? Yeah, the answer absolutely is yes. And uh, that happens on uh, a couple different levels. Uh, although some of the courses, as you saw in the curriculum, are very much oriented towards the GBFA program, uh, even while you're at PCA, a couple of them are exclusive to the GBFA students. The majority of classes that you take are actually mixed classes, where not only are you um, in with the general PCA population, but uh, the art students there have really taken to the, the film department. And uh, so, you know, they love to come over and take the GBFA courses also. Um, another way that, uh, that you would, would be interacting with the PCA general population is through the events. So Cine Club, uh, as I mentioned, is open not only to public, it's open to everybody at PCA. So uh, students will come to that. There'll be art shows uh, that are either being put on by other PCA students, there's screenings put on by the GBFA students, and all of those are always uh, welcoming both PCA students and GBFA students to them. So there is a lot of opportunities to, to mix with the, just the, the rest of the college students over at PCA. Thank you. And uh, here's another question. And Daniel, I might actually, it's portfolio related, but I think from a faculty perspective, it might be some interesting interest to get sure. your 
your perspective on this. So students currently working on their art portfolio in a class that's specifically created for that purpose, but it, it's design it's it's designed to be completed in pieces throughout the year. So the uh, the issue being that the full project perhaps might not be done until after our deadlines for the program, uh, application deadlines for the program. So um, what's your perspective on, do you think maybe submitting something that either isn't completely finished or maybe a segment of it, maybe an earlier portion of it? Um, any thoughts on, on how you might guide the student? Yeah, I mean, you know, from the faculty perspective or, or even from admissions perspective, um, I mean, we're used to seeing works in progress. Uh, definitely the faculty are, are spending the majority of our time, you know, grading and helping works in progress. So I don't think it's anything uh, that uh, would be out of their, their wheelhouse. If it's something that you believe in, if it's something that you think is representative of work you're doing, um, just give a description of how it is a work in progress. And then, um, you know, this is what it's at and this is what it's reflecting and this is where it will go. Uh, and I think that in itself is is fine, at least from my perspective. Yeah. And I would agree a hundred percent. I think, yeah, but certainly okay with, um, I think it would be helpful to make sure that you give that, that perspective on it or that um, context, if you will. You know, so if it's only a segment of it without, you don't want the, the viewer necessarily sitting there saying, well, this feels incomplete. I'm not quite sure where they're going for it. But if you talk about it in a perspective of this is, you know, the first portion of what's going to be a larger story. And then, you know, following up with what Daniel said, absolutely. Uh, I think that would be helpful. And, and I don't, I would not imagine that I'd see an issue with that at all. Um, feel free to continue to put in any additional questions that you might have. We did have a handful that were pre-submitted. Um, uh, so I'll answer one of those. So there was one that was related to sort of beyond uh, the film art program. Um, so, you know, maybe sort of like aspirations that students have in the program, maybe some of the things they're doing. So Daniel, I'm not sure if you wanna, we've had a couple of graduating classes now, so there's certainly some things going on, um, but anything that you'd like to share from an outreach perspective? Yeah, so we um, were able to, to do two things with this program. I mean, Emerson itself uh, already has a, a pretty large footprint uh, west coast in the United States industry. Uh, with this, we've been opening up doorways uh, for students to head back to Europe after graduation. Uh, as a matter of fact, after you've graduated, you can apply for up to an additional year on your visa to continue uh, working or looking for work in, um, in Europe. And um, so that's one of the doorways that, that uh, opens up. Uh, another thing that's happened, obviously, is um, the ability of this to, again, customize that capstone year for what you want it to be and start to network and build off of that, meaning that when you graduate, uh, we do have students that obviously have gone into um, television production. Uh, we've had students that have gone into film festivals, which is the beginning of, you know, the career of an independent uh, filmmaker. Um, we've got, uh, you know, networking leads in, in uh, streaming media. Um, but I mean, uh, basically this opens up a lot of doorways at the end. Uh, if you focus in that capstone year and you wanna pick a direction, then the program is here to kind of help start you down one of those routes, uh, whether that's installation art, uh, streaming, uh, film festivals, or the other places that our students have headed off towards. Thank you. Um, so Andy had a question about um, already having a short film already made, but it's more than five minutes. Um, could could uh, I choose a scene for this from the short film to see it shows your ability in storytelling and uses your portfolio? Yeah, as we've indicated in other instances, by, by all means, if you have something that you feel like is a good representation, obviously you'll have to, you know, if it's longer than five minutes, have to consider your edits and how you may want to approach that if there's a specific portion of it. Um, you don't necessarily have to create a something from scratch um, for portfolios. We've certainly had students in the past that have uh, utilized, you know, work that they've already completed, or for that matter, uh, maybe it's an ongoing project that they, you know, take a segment of and, and give us some insight into their, their, you know, their process and production. So certainly uh, I don't think that's, that's an issue at all. Uh, another one I'll take here, it's a, is there a way to receive financial aid for uh, 
cost of living, et cetera. Um, so uh, the good news is uh, this is this program. Certainly students are eligible for uh, financial aid uh, as with other Emerson-based programs. So the good news is there's specific scholarships set up just for this program as well, which is nice. So students can be eligible for specific film art based scholarships. Um, as I think I mentioned earlier, as part of the application process, we'll look at your entire um, application sort of in total, at not only for admission, but also for merit scholarships. So students will be made aware of scholarships at the same time they're made aware of admission. So if you're admitted and you receive a scholarship, you'll be notified of that as part of the uh, initial uh, ad admission letter uh, and notification. So. And then as far as need-based opportunities, we certainly encourage students, if you feel you may be um, eligible or wanna be considered for need-based opportunities, we do ask students to uh, complete the uh, FAFSA, uh, as well as uh, for first-year students, we do ask that you also complete the CSS profile. So if you do those two things, obviously you wanna make sure you pay attention to any deadlines for those uh, based on when you're applying. Uh, and then uh, as long as you've supplied us with the appropriate information, um, then we can also review you for uh, a need-based award as well. That typically takes, um, dep again, depending on when you're admitted, what, what you apply for, you know, early decision, early action, regular decision, et cetera. Uh, it usually comes about three weeks to four weeks or so after, um, your initial decision, sometimes not that long, but I would anticipate it probably at least about three weeks or so. Uh, if you, if the financial aid office needs any additional information or has any questions, they will reach out to you. So again, make sure you're paying attention to, you know, your email. And if anything comes through, uh, go ahead and um, take a look at that. The other nice thing with the Emerson application process is once you've applied, you've got access to your um, application portal. So you can also see, you know, go in anytime you want, get signed in. You can see exactly what has been submitted, what's been received, et cetera. If you're missing anything, things get posted there. So you can really, you know, closely follow along uh, to make sure that you've got everything in by the required deadlines. All right. Um, Another question, Daniel, this one's for you, is this, do students own the work they create? Yep, that's a, a simple yes. And uh, the only thing that we ask as part of the program is that at the end of your film or somewhere in your piece that you put up the, the logo for the program and that you cite the program as a, a co-producer in your work. But other than that, you own the copyright and you can do whatever you like. Uh, I'm sure that the college would always be happy to show off your work because we're proud of our students. So um, there's always the opportunity for, for you to kind of use our social media channels and other ways too, to get your work out there. Okay, great. Um, here's a question. Uh, what does tuition look like for the entire program? So, so the nature of this program um, is, uh, it's a little different than others because of the summer experiences, et cetera. So it's, um, I don't want to say variable, it's there's a sort of a per credit hour rate, if you will. But the way it's broken down, because you take, um, you know, eight credits in the first summer, then you take uh, 12 credits per term in the you know fall and spring, um, and then additional credits uh, the following summer, et cetera, as we've already outlined. So due to that nature, what you'll see is it's um, it's not quite the same as like if you're comparing it to a more traditional four-year program, then it's just fall and spring of each of four years and like a flat rate in that regard. Um, we'll make sure we get it in the link um, to, uh, or in the chat, a link to our tuition uh, page for the program. But the good news is a couple of things. One is an accelerated program. Overall, the cost of attending this program is less than what you would pay over the four years, say um, if you were in the traditional film program at Emerson. Um, uh, and then you've also got the benefit of graduating ahead of time. Now you've packed a lot in, you've packed four years worth of, you know, uh, work into a little over three years, but, um, there's also that, that sort of opportunity cost or benefit of 
graduating uh, ahead of a traditional four-year program, it gives you that much more time to you know get out into uh, the the industry and and you know, begin your your career. Um, but I, I apologize. My apologies. I don't have the exact number right off the top of my head. But if we'll, I'll see if we've got that in the chat. Um, or if we can get that in the chat, we'll get that in there. Um, but uh, if you don't see that, if you go to the um, the program page, uh, it gives you um, a direct link to uh, tuition costs and financial aid. Okay. And um, got time for maybe a handful more questions. It looks like Brooks got a question. Does our access with equipment broaden throughout the grades or do you have pretty much open access to begin with? Daniel, is that one you like to take? Yep, yeah, good question, Brooke. Um, no, it does broaden as you continue up through the uh, the grades. Part of the reason for that is, um, you know, each of the classes is associated with a certain level of equipment that you're learning and using for your projects. Um, after you've finished that and, you know, you're qualified on the cameras, there's the, uh, the opportunity to use them uh, in the future. Um, starting obviously with the basics DSLR and mirrorless cameras, uh, moving into the uh, the mid range uh, video cameras, all the way up to well, you got the 16 millimeter uh, cameras in there, uh, including the um, the Airy uh, digital cinema cameras and uh, the lenses in support of those uh, LED lighting kits. Uh, we have access to all the Adobe Creative Cloud software for free as a student, so you'd have access beginning off with uh, with Premiere. Uh, but if you do want exposure to Avid Media Composer, uh, DaVinci, we've got uh, workshops in both of those. So, um, yeah. So as you continue going on, you build more and more of a skill set on more and more equipment. Okay. And um, another good question for you, Daniel. Do global film art students take uh, the same basic film, take away the same basic film skills that other Emerson film majors do? Yes, yeah, they do. The only uh, trade-off will be a couple of advanced courses uh, that Emerson students might be able to have in a fourth year. Uh, but because this is a three and a half year program and that last year is devoted to capstone work, uh, we study almost the same courses up to a certain point and then you're gonna switch to project-based uh, courses in that last year instead. But that allows you again, the freedom to do other things than just filmmaking. So um, yep, that's the answer. Okay. And there's a quick question about if the slides will be available to view elsewhere. Um, we will have um, this will be this presentation will be sent to you uh, about a week to two weeks from from today. Um, so if you have any follow up or want to look back, you'll be able to do that. Um, another question, perhaps Daniel, if you can answer this one, yep. um, does the connection does the program have any connection to actors in Paris? Uh, not directly. Uh, we have obviously networking and we work with uh, other you know, film schools and stuff on projects. Uh, there's also cross support. Uh, students help students. Um, and they've been able to find French actors for a lot of the capstone projects, but it's not something that the school does for you. It's something you have to do yourself by networking out. Okay, great. Thank you. And it looks like we have one last question here. Um, what are opportunities to connect in the film industry that you can get through this program? Yeah, this one again, I think involves some effort on the part of the student. Uh, the school and the program gives you as many opportunities as it can through uh, the you know cine events that we do, through uh, working on projects, through the internships, uh, through just the ability to, to kind of uh, you know do social connections, make friends, find out what projects people are working on. All of those are opportunities to continue. Uh, you know, what does the school bring to you? The school brings to you the, the time and attention of professional level working filmmakers who are happy to talk with you, to answer your questions, to you know, discuss your work and to talk about their careers. I think the combination of all that is what opens doors. And that's again, something that, you know, you have to do your half of it too. And, but the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so one or two quick things. I'm not sure we saw anything about uh, residential life uh, on the per questions related to that. Just a real brief note to that. So obviously students are moving back and forth between the two campuses during the, the three plus years. Um, so typically through the majority of your time at Emerson, when you're on the Boston campus, you'll be staying in our residence halls. We have multiple residence halls um, 
and uh, we'll have all of the, uh, certainly since during the summer, we'll house all of the um, students in the program in, in the same residence hall. Um, uh, so, and our residence halls tend to be, I don't know that they'd be in the main um, typical first year residence hall. So typically one of the more uh, suite based residence halls is usually where they stay. Um, uh, so, which is a nice, a nice option. And um, then while you're in Paris, in the first year uh, students stay in uh, student housing. It's not owned by uh, Paris College of Art, but it's uh, student housing that is uh, part of an organization that's really throughout um, the city of Paris. They've got multiple locations, but our students stay in, it's called Estudine, and they stay in the Republique um, facility, which is staying, would you say, maybe about... 15 to 20 minutes by Metro. Yep, yep yes. exactly. Or a walk. You can walk it if you want to. Yeah, or walk as well. So so there you uh, have like a sort of a studio set up each individual student. Um, you've got your room, um, furnished room. You've got uh, a, a small kitchenette. I think I believe it's a cooktop um, uh, and some basics there in terms of a small kitchenette. And then, of course, you've got your own private uh, restroom as well. Um, so students stay there, there, it is a larger facility. So students from, uh, from other institutions within Paris, uh, also, uh, will be staying there. Um, but, um, like I said, it is for all intents and purposes, it's a student residence hall. Um, and so there are, you know, staff that work with you, et cetera. Um, and we typically also have, uh, someone who's a resident advisor acts as a resident advisor uh, from Paris College of Art that's also there for you know any questions or items that may come up related to your residential living. After your first year at um, uh, at Paris College of Art, you, years two and three, you actually have the option to move wherever you'd like. So some students will find their you know number will find their own apartments. I'm not sure if there's anyone that's decided to stay at uh, Estudines, but that's certainly entitled to do that. They would just do that independently on their own. Uh, otherwise, most students will you know, find uh, arrangements, apartments, et cetera, uh, that they find you know, work for them from a cost uh, and convenience perspective uh, within Paris. All right, last, maybe this time for this one last question. How often do the programs have breaks or spaces uh, as compared to say like an average college experience um, when you can visit family. Uh, I'm happy to talk about uh, Daniel, I don't know if you want to mention that a little bit more. Yeah, no, this is a good one to, to get in. It's an important question. Uh, I just wanted to quickly mention on the rooms that the castle itself has uh, been completely redone too. That's a beautiful facility yeah. and it has yeah. classrooms, cafeteria and uh, space for up to 90 students. So uh, your summer there is is definitely a comfortable one. I think I, I meant to mention that, but <laughs> yeah. I love the castle. So um, let me answer this question. This is a good question. I mentioned it kind of quickly in, in passing, maybe when I was saying it's a three and a half year accelerated program. Uh, the longest breaks that you're going to get in this uh, program are going to be a winter break. And that's between the uh, fall and spring semesters in Paris. Um, and I think that's about a three or four week break. That's a pretty standard break. Otherwise, most of the breaks in this between semesters really only usually run about two weeks. Uh, two and a half weeks. And you have to factor into that, that in that two weeks, you're expected to move from one campus location to another campus location. So there's not a lot of time, in all honesty, in the program to take a vacation, to, you know, go and visit your family for maybe longer than a week. Uh, most of the rest of the time, it's uh, going to be, uh, you know, three semesters, year-round classes. Uh, and, um, and you do have to factor that in. So there is a little bit of a you know, student responsibility in this to, to commit to a program like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, they, we are, the running joke obviously is the family should always come visit you anyway if you're in Paris, but um, <laughs> you know, but in all reality, yes, you do have to, to factor in, it's an accelerated program. Yeah. Very good, well, thank you, Daniel. And that's a great place to uh, wrap up and we are at the hour. So thank you all for taking time to, um, spend with us this uh, afternoon learning more about the program. Uh, I know I put my uh, contact information, my email in the chat. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, uh, myself or 
in general, if you have questions, you can also uh, reach out to our admissions uh, email. So that's admissions at emerson.edu. Uh, and we'll make sure that we get any of your questions answered. But we look forward to working with you all. And um, hopefully we'll see some of you in Boston and Paris in the coming year. All Thank right. you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.